All right. Let me see here. Trying to. I see one little spot. It says I'm live on Facebook. Oh, there we go. Now we're live on Facebook. Now we are live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram, YouTube, hopefully YouTube. YouTube keeps giving me errors, so I don't know what's going on with it lately. All right. Just getting, just getting ready here. All right. All right, guys. So tonight we're going to go back into the book of Mark. We haven't been in Mark in a couple of weeks, so several weeks, um, partly because of the, the stuff that's been going on, um, partly because of Easter. Um, but I think tonight is appropriate to get back into to Mark because um, – the, the chapter four, it, it's it's all based on faith, and and so t- today today is a good time, or now is a good time to talk about faith because um, especially with what we're dealing with, right? We we want to we want to continually walk in faith, and and remember um, that the writer of Hebrews he he defined what faith is, and and so if you want to turn to uh, um, if you want to turn with me real quick to, to Hebrews chapter 11, it just as some of you know this by heart, but but it's important to be reminded of what, what it says in the word. Um, Paul, I believe Paul wrote, Hebrews writes, now faith is the assurance of, of oh, that's a amplified. I don't want amplified. That's a little bit too much. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained the good testimony. By faith we understand that the world, world were tra- framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So, so it's a good time to talk about faith because you know we're we're, we're thinking about we want to think about um, hope for things that are not seen, right? And so what we're hoping for is like especially now um, is for this 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 epidemic to come to an end, right? And and hopefully. Um, people are, are praying and, and, and asking God for for uh, for healing. Um, healing could be that we're, we're seeking forgiveness for um, sins that we may have committed or land may have committed, our nation may have committed. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about uh, the reason why we in America are, are dealing with this is because the abortions that are being allowed, um, because of the the um, <clears throat> the the church is not speaking up basically um, enough about things that are being allowed for. Like um, we're, we're seeing more and more casinos popping up. We're seeing more and more bars and breweries popping up. We're seeing more of allowance of um, homosexual marriage, um, transgenderism. Um, we're seeing right now in a crisis, I, I get it, that, that um, there's a lot of things that are not being responded to by our police forces. And I get it because they may be um, overwhelmed, but but we're. This seems to start a trend a lot of times when when we when we see things not being responded to that sometimes these are things that are going to be allowable, right? Um, and and so there's more and more, um, basically more and more sin that are being allowed for. It. And 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 so what we want to do is ask God, and I'm trying to say is that we want to ask God for forgiveness, right? We we need to ask Him not just for the nation, but for us personally, where where we fall short. Um, ask Him to search our hearts. And, and, and come in and, and, and make the changes that need to be made. Um, on a personal level, I think a lot of us um, struggle with sin, um, not just temptation, but but the struggle with sin that, that we're not um, we're not allowing to be confronted. We're, we're trying to hide it. We're trying to cover it up. Um, so, so with that aspect, right, um, when we're talking about faith, we want to talk about 
that we have the faith that God is going to forgive us uh, of the things that, uh, of the wrongs that we do. Um, so before we get into the text, let's get into prayer um, and, and let's get prepared for, for tonight's message. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together. Um, even though we're coming through internet, it's, it's, um, it may not be the same, but do you still allow us to meet together uh, to hear your word so that we can be encouraged and so that we can grow. We ask you to, to search our hearts as we're going through your word tonight and, and to seek those things, point out those things that we need to let go of. And, and where we falter in faith, Father, we ask for forgiveness because we know that when we don't have faith, that allows for fear to creep in. And we don't want to have fear to creep into our hearts. We don't want it to be something that overwhelms us. We want to rest in you and trust in, in that in everything that's going on, that, that you're working through it. And it may not just be, and I'm not, we're not talking just about the coronavirus, Father, but we're also talking about in other areas of our lives, whether it be finances or, or struggles that we're dealing with at work or at home or, or in our personal lives, that, that we can have the faith that you're going to work it out and that you're going to build us up and work, us, work in us and, and change us the way that we need to be so that we can be more righteous in your eyes. We thank you for, for all the love that you, you have for us and all that you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. So Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 1. And again he, talking about Jesus, and again he began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into the boat and sat it on, a sea, on the sea. And a whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Then he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you has been given to, been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not, may, and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all of the parables? The sower sows the word. And deal, these are the ones by the wayside where the word was sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, so and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thrones, thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and takes, and the cares of this word. Excuse me. These, they are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things, entering to choke, choke the word when it becomes and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones thrown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. So what we're looking at is that Jesus, this is one of one of the first parables we see in Mark where Jesus is talking about, he's comparing our lives, our faith walk, um, based like like seeds in the ground, right? And and so he's when he's talking about the sower, um, one of the things that he's talking about with the sower, he's talking about himself, right? Where he came um, amongst them, and he, and he talked to them and taught them about what God really meant by his his commandments, about what, what his law was talking about. Again, talking about, that it is hard for us to live perfectly by the law, right? If we're trying to do things based on our flesh, based on the things that are on our works, I know we talk about this a lot, but but it's so true, um, based on our actions, if that's how we're trying to, to get right with God, then we're going to fall short, right? Why? Because we 
there's there's always going to be some sort of thing that we're not going to do right, right? Part of that is is based on where our heart is, right? It's based on um, talking about like uh, where, where where God has where He has an outline. If we're doing things based on on our flesh, right? He wants it done perfectly, right? Without any mistakes. And, and you all know that it's hard for us to, to do anything without making a mistake. Even if we're doing our jobs, right? Even if we're doing things that, that we know how to do, that we've gone to gone to school for, we've done it for many years, that, that there's going to be things that we're, we're going to experience that we, we are not doing it perfect, perfectly. Um, part of that is, is because we're in a world where, where there's a lot of brokenness, where there's a lot of sin, where there's where there's going to be imperfection, and so so we have influences of the world that are going to interfere with with how we do things. So we may want to do something like uh, here's an example, right? Many times when we're working on a car, let's say like I, I can take something it, it, um, most recently in, in in most recent experience. So I was changing the brakes on my truck. And I went, out, I went in and I knew one of the rotors had to be turned, right? It had to be smoothed out because it had a, it had a, a wobble in the, in, in the rotor. And I took it in and um, I put the rotor on and, and I didn't check the rotor to make sure that it was turned properly. And I put on the new pads and, it, and I went and the other side, it didn't need to be cut and, or turned. And I put pads on that side. And I was driving around the truck and I still felt this wobble. And I was going through for a couple of weeks. At first I thought it was maybe just the the pads need to settle in, but it went like this for a couple of weeks. So I decided, well, maybe I need to turn the other side. So when I went to take it all apart again, right, uh, I started to take off the the rotor. And and mind you that this is the first time that I've taken the rotors off of my truck um, since I bought it new. Um, there's a um, from the manufacturer they put a nut in it to, to hold the, the the rotor on as it's going down the assembly line. This particular screw stripped, and so I had to and and, and so again there was an error. There was there, it was making it more and more complicated. I finally we finally got uh, I finally with some assistance was able to get that screw off. Was able to get that rotor off. Went and took it in. Got it. Got that one turned, and there was still a wobble. And I wasn't sure what was going on. And so what I did is I took it in and had them look at it and come to find out when they turned the rotors, they didn't turn both sides. So so they had one side smooth and the other side was still warped. And that's why I felt this wobble, right? So this, what I'm trying to say is that you may be doing everything that you might do. Like I was doing everything that I knew what to do to, to take care of the brakes. Um, but in this particular case, because other people were involved and they were not, they didn't do their job correctly, it wasn't done perfectly. So, so we will we'll experience things like that as as we're we're going through life, trying to do things in our flesh, and and we we may even fail. We, we some, a lot of a lot of times we may try to take shortcuts, right? Where and and we have to be careful with that when we're taking shortcuts when we're doing stuff because it may cause damage. It it, it may cause more complications. But certainly when it comes to God's word, we should not be taking any shortcuts. But what happens is that when we're when we're living by God's word and we're, we're trying to take shortcuts in that, or we're, I'm sorry, when we're trying to practice the things in God's word in our lives, what we do is it carries over like what we're doing with things in the world, right? When we're trying to take care of breaks or, or our jobs, for example, we try to find shortcuts so that we can get things done quicker, or, or we may think that we know better um, or a better way, but God has, has a better plan for us. And so, I know that's a lot to say, but that's that's what we have to remember, right? That that we cannot live by the word completely. I mean, by the law completely. We can live by the word completely, but we cannot live by the law completely, perfectly, um, if that's all we're trying to do. We we live by the word, then we know that the word is as as John chapter one talks about is Jesus. And if we live by by following Him, then we become righteous and we become. Um, where, where we're led to do what's right. Um, so again, talking about going back to what we have, uh, this whole tangent was going on is that Jesus was a sower in this particular case. He was spreading God's word. He was sharing God's love and he was teaching others to live um, 
by what God really wants. He wants a relationship with us, right? Um, <clears throat> so here he is. He's talking about a sower went out to sow. So here he is, like Jesus goes out in it now for us today. It's those of us who go out and share God's word. We're, we're sowers of God's word, right? We go out, we share God's word, we sow it into people's lives, and, 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 and there's going to be different reactions, and it says here, and, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. Now, there are going to be people who, um, when they hear God's word, right, they're, they're going to reject what he has to say. It says that they fell, it fell by the, some of it fell by the wayside. They're going to reject what he says, and, and they're going to walk away because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to, they don't want to hear how, how, they're, how they've committed sin, how they've been wrong with a lot of things that they they felt that they were doing right, and so they they walk away and they and they do what they, whatever they want, but he but he continued on and says and the birds of the air came and devoured it right so when you jump down to uh, verse fifteen right he, he he clarifies what he's saying there and he says and these are the ones by the wayside where the word was sown when they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word as that was sown in our hearts. So, so again, he's talking about the, those people that they hear God's word and they don't want to hear, or they, they hear God's word being spoken, but they don't want to hear it uh, and apply it in their lives. Again, they, they want to do whatever they want to do. They want to live by their own standards. They think that they know better, right? They, they, because it, it's something that they, they think it makes them feel good, right? But in reality, what it's done is doing is it's causing more and more problems, right? Um, and so, what, and so instead of receiving God's word, what they're doing is that they're immediately rejecting it and, and they're living life by their own standards, by their, by their own, um, by what they think is um, what they know better, right? But, but who knows better for us than God who created us? God knows better because he knows what, um, what he has intended for us, right? He's the one who's holy. He's the one who's righteous. As a matter of fact, when he gave us his word, when he gave us his law, right, it's the standards that he set for us. So it's not like where we think that sometimes we're, we're, when we're growing up as children or, or yeah, when, when we're growing up as children and, and our parents lay down the law or lay down rules in our house, we, we rebel because we think that we're going to do what we're going to do what we want to do. And we think that we're going to get away with it. And, and, and so with that, with that thought in mind, we, we remember that God is our Heavenly Father. And, and so like those little children that rebel, rebel, their parents, rebel against their parents in their homes, we also rebel, rebel against our Heavenly Father because we want to do what we want to do and we, we want to do it on our, own, on our own accord. But when we think about things like, I, I've shared this before, like when our mom tells us not to touch the stove because it's hot, right? Don't touch that stove, honey. It's hot. You'll get burned. We do it anyway. Why? Because we're curious. Oh, psh, and we get burned, right? And and hopefully, even even when we do do that after the first time that we burn ourselves, we learn from that so we don't do it again. But guess what? Sometimes people go back to second, third, fourth, fifth time. They don't learn from the first time. And and it's the idea here with what when God gives us His Word, when He teaches us something. When he reveals something in our lives, it, it, a lot of times what we do is, is we go back and touch the stove again, so to speak, right? We don't, we don't completely listen because, again, we think we know what's better. And, and um, if only we would learn, right? I, I think about... No, I'm not even going to go down that way. Then he goes down in verse 5. He says, Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Now, excuse me. Let's continue on it with in verse 6. But, it's, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Now, what he's, what he's referring to here is that there's people who received God's word, right? And, and, and immediately, as soon as they received his word, immediately they're on fire for him, right? They, they want to do what he, that he, they want to do what he asked them to do. He, they want to grow in their relationship with him. They want to follow him to the ends of the earth. 
But because they're not taking time to spend time in prayer, to spend time in study, to spend spend time in fellowship, um, what happens is is that eventually the the faith that they had, that that the unfiredness that they had, it dies off. Why? Because they have nothing to kindle it. They have nothing to continue to build up their faith. They, again, they're they're living on their own accord, right? Um, and, and, and here in verse 16, right, he, he, described, he, he describes it this way. He says, these likewise are the ones who are sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness. So a lot of times people, they receive God's word with gladness and they, they hear that, hey, he's going to heal me. He's going to help me. He's going to do, he's going to take care of me. And they, and they receive, they profess with their mouth, but they don't do anything to grow in their relationship. Um, think about this. When when we get involved with people in our lives, right? When we try to seek um, to to get to know know them, um, we will spend time with them and, and get to know who they are, right? To get to know what their likes are, their dislikes are, to get to know uh, some of their past. Maybe we we just spend time with them. But if we just get if we just go in and we don't spend time with people. What happens to that relationship? A lot of times it dies off, right? Because, because we don't have, we don't find any common interest. And what God wants from us when we're when we're developing a relationship with Him, He wants us to to find out more about Him. And again, that means that we we get into the Word, um, we get into Bible studies, we get into memorization, right? We we get into fellowship with other people, we get into prayer, and and remembering that with prayer. Um, it's not just about us going in and, and talking. It's going in and listening as well. It's, it's having a conversation. It's waiting on him. It's, it's looking for a direction, right? Um, <clears throat> so in verse 17, he says, And they do not, they have no root in themselves, so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for, words, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. So, an important reason why we want to make sure that we're in God's word is not just about growing our faith. It's not just about getting to know who he is, but it's also so that we start bearing his word into our hearts so that when people come and question us about what we believe, right, wh why we believe what we believe, we can share things in scripture. We can share about how God talks about things like he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us, he'll take care of us. That, Like when we find in, 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 in Thessalonians where Paul was it yes in Thessalonians where Paul talks about that that he'll give he'll allow us to go on trials but he will not allow us to endure more than he and us can handle together in other words that he's with us right and 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 the expectation when he allows us to go in trials is the, the expectation is that, that we lean on him we learn to, to 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 seek him um and and to grow but if we're not getting grounded in the word if we're not doing a, 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 a reading, at least reading the word, right, or, or, or memorizing it or studying it or fellowshipping with others, praying, right, if we're not doing these things, then we can't get grounded in, and we don't have a firm foundation. I, I think about like when, when here's the thing that, that Christ, remember Christ talked about this. He said there, when, whoever builds on, on sandy grounds, right, their foundation on sandy grounds, what happens to that house? If you put a foundation on, on sandy, sandy grounds, what happens is, is it will wash away. It has nothing to, st to stand firm on. But if you build a house, a foundation on, on a stony ground, right, on firm ground, right, it'll, it'll, it'll stay there for, for a long time. We want to say forever, but we know at some point the house the houses deteriorate. But think about this, right? When, when builders go in to build a home, they, they make sure the ground is set firm, right? They go in a lot of times that I, I don't know how many of you have gone by construction sites, um, but but there's a lot of construction sites that have gone by where, where it seems like they've been, they prepare the ground. It takes them like several months to prepare the ground. And and it's a good thing that they do that because what they do is they go in and take, they test the dirt, right? And then they, and then they see where they, they need to do like compaction or they need to add in uh, more materials and compact in more materials to make it firm because they, when they build their building, they want to make sure that it lasts. We need to do that with our faith, right? We need to make sure that our faith is going to last, not for a short period of time, for a long period of time. And how do we do that? By building on the foundation, right? 
by 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 making sure that the foundation that we we have going on is is, is bearing God's word in our heart and, and getting to know who He is and listening. We don't want to be like these who who um, we receive God's word with gladness, and then when 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 struggles come up, when trials come up, that we fall away. We want to be able to to know that hey, this is something that it's going to go to be temporary. It doesn't matter how long it seems like it's going to last. This is going to this is only going to be temporary, and God will carry me through. Look at what He did for Job, right? And 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 the thing that to remember is that with Job, He allowed the the tribulation to happen to him because He's using Job even today, right? To show us that when we when we rest in him, even during these trials, he'll take care of us. He'll bless us. If we if we continue to trust him, even when we don't know what's going on, even when we don't know why we're going through this situation, he will he will take care of us. <clears throat> In verse seven. It says, some feet fell on the, among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and yielded no crop. So there are people who, um, when they when they um, when they get into to a fellowship or a relationship with Christ, or when they surrender to Christ, they don't completely leave their old life. They hang on to their to their old things. They they continue to 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 live in sin. They 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 show up to church, right? We we know people like this. We we've seen them, and, and a lot of times we we're like that, right? People these people they show up to church. They they're in their Sunday best. They look good. They speak the proper language. They say, "God bless you, brother. I'm praying for you." They sound good in prayer, but when they go home behind closed doors, right? They're doing things like. Um, they're 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 gambling, they're um, drinking or you drinking alcoholically or they're using drugs, um, they're they're sleeping around and and um, outside of marriage or having sex outside of marriage, and, and these are people who are saying that you know what I, I want to follow you Lord but I'm I'm still going to do what I want to do and, and and James talks about this, um, he refers to these guys. As double-minded, if you turn to uh, uh, let me see if I can find it. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> anyway, he, he what he says is that he talk what he talks about is that is that we don't want to be double minded. Why? Because when we're double minded, um, then then it's then it's a hard struggle for us to deal with. That we don't know, like we we don't know who to serve, basically, and and so. What happens is, is that because we we become double-minded, because we we struggle and we don't know who who to serve or who to follow, um, what we do is eventually is that we start walking away from God and we start walking back toward towards a lifestyle of, of sin that we've been in. Um, and 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 you know the the problem is is that if we don't stay connected, right? If even if even even during this time right now when we're not able to fellowship like we would normally do. Um, where, where the physical uh, contact, right? We're, we're, we're able to do the face to face, like we, like we're, like we, we can freely do when we're not dealing with with an epidemic like this. Um, a lot of times, people people struggle in their faith and they and they fall away because they don't have the encouragement. And with that being said, what I want to do is encourage everybody who who's watching now or or later on that you make sure that you reach out to your brothers, right, to your sisters. Um, try to find ways to, to keep them encouraged. Try to find ways to, to, to connect because we need to have the encouragement with each other. We need to be able to lift each other up and, and remind each other how much God loves us, even during these times. 
in verse 18, he defines it this way. He says, now these are the ones, are so, the, the, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, riches and desires for other things enter, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So he's also talking about those people who, who will not let go of the material things, right? There, there are many people who, who um, they say they follow Christ, and, and, and what they do is they use their faith to gain material riches. And, and that's not why we should be following Christ. We shouldn't be following him to, to gain material wealth. The, the wealth that we should be looking for is the treasures that we're building up in heaven. And, and what are those treasures? Uh, of helping others to, to know who he is, um, introducing, him, to introducing them to Christ, um, leading them to the, to the cross, and, and helping them to grow in their faith as well. Um, the things of this world, even Jesus talks about it. He says, do not build up treasures here on earth, which rust, moth, and fire can destroy, but build up your treasures in heaven. See, the, as some of you can see, right, on Facebook, it's kind of glitchy. If YouTube, I'm not even sure if you're hearing me on YouTube. Um, you know, these things, that what happens is, is that this stuff is going to, to eventually go away, wear out, and, um, and it's not going to last. But the treasures in heaven, right, where we see more people come to Christ, they'll last for eternity. Why? Because they're following him. And that's, and that's the hope that we would want to do is that we're building those treasures up. We don't want to allow um, these things to choke out our faith. And there are people who um, I've seen uh, over the years, I've seen people who, who follow Christ because they want to build up material wealth. But when they don't get the things that they're thinking that Christ is going to bless them with, they fall away because they think that, that he doesn't love them. He, they think that... Um, He's not going to bless them, and, and, and he's actually blessing them, um, but in a different way. Um, so, so, so these are things that we need to let go of. And then here, um, and then he says in verse 8, he says, But other seed fell on the good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Hear that out again. But some other, but some other seed fell on the good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. So it doesn't matter how much we were producing. What is talking, what he's saying is, is that the seed that fell on good ground, this is the seed that these are the people who come to a relationship with him, and and they do everything that they can to to get grounded in the word, right? Um, they ask questions. They search for, for for answers. They search for definitions. They it could be doing a study in um, um, the culture of the time to understand why he, that certain things are being addressed. And and I've heard arguments even just recently. I've heard arguments about why certain things in scripture doesn't apply to today because it's addressing a particular thing in culture. Well, guess what? God's word does not come back void. Guess what? God's word does not change. Right. What applied then applies today. There, it's don't don't buy into that 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 rhetoric about whatever happened in the past, right? Whatever was being addressed in the past doesn't apply to today because it still applies today. Still applies till today. Um, anyway, um, some people were may get upset that maybe they're only producing thirtyfold. Well. And, and, and there's other people that are producing a hundredfold. Well, well, think about this. Um, don't worry about how much you're producing. Don't focus on that you're only producing thirtyfold. That you only may you only may have won one person over to Christ, and, and you're discipling one person. Well, guess what? That's one person that somebody else that 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 wouldn't have known known his word or known a relationship without him unless you were in their in their lives. And, and a good example of that would be like, look at Andrew, right? When we see the accounts of the, of the apostles, the only person that we've seen that Andrew led to the Lord was Peter. And, and, and look how mightily God used Peter to, to build his church. He's known to, he's, he was one of the apostles that was known to build up the church in Asia, right? And, and, and there was many people who came to know Christ because of Peter's teachings, so, so even if it's just one person that you've led to the Lord, 
so be it. You never know if that's the next Billy Graham or Billy Sunday or or Dwight or Dwight Moody that you that you led to 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 Christ. Just focus on just just focus on building your relationship in and 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 going out and sharing God's word and and building people up as they come to know Him and 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 don't fret, right? We 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 got to be careful that sometimes when people walk away, even as we're building them up, right? That sometimes they'll walk away and still choose to do what they choose to do, um, even though we've exhausted a lot of resources into them. We should not fret over that. Why? Because we're doing what God has called us to do. We're doing what He's told us to do, and and we're being faithful. And and so, with this right. And, and looking at the seed, right, the seed that we see is, is, is like a seed of faith, right? And, and, and we know a little bit later, we're going to look at the, the, the parable of the mustard seed, the, the, a little seed, how, how much it produces, right? All we need to do is have faith as small as the mustard seed or just a little bit of faith that God is going to produce a lot of stuff or, or use us or, or grow us, right? that he will work in us. We just need to have the faith that he is walking with us and he's going to, to do what he wants to do in our lives and, and others will be led. And we'll be surprised how many people we impact. I never thought in a million years that I would be able to impact people the way that I do. And 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 maybe maybe it's not as impactful as, as other people, but the fact is is that God will God uses me to touch other people's lives because I'm being faithful. And it's the same thing for you. God will use you to impact other people's lives when you're being faithful and you're being and you're listening and you're following through. Now looking at verses nine through eleven, here's something that's a little interesting that for us to take a look at here. It says, And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things are in parables, so that seeing they may not they may see, but and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. So Christ is saying this is that unless you have faith, unless you grow, follow him and allow him to be Lord and Savior in your life, unless you allow him to come into your and and and, and make the changes that need to happen, you're not going to understand his word. You're not going to understand that um, um, how much he wants to work in your life, right? Um, we need to have that faith in Christ to hear and to know what he has to tell us, right? To hear and to know how he's going to work through us, right? To hear and to know how he's going to work in our lives and how he's going to provide. And and we need and again the only way that we can do that is by being in his word, being in fellowship, being in prayer, being obedient, answering the call wherever it may be. And a lot of times the call that we're answering may not be the call that we're, we're looking for. Some We have to be careful that, that we're not looking for um, bigger ministry, right? But we also need to be careful that, that we are responding to the call that he gives us. Um, see, if, if, if it was easy... If it was easy to follow God and to follow His Word, right, then all of us would be forgiven. That there, there would not there would not be a need for a Savior. There would not be a need for a sacrifice to, for the blood being shed. But but it is not easy. It's not easy to 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 let go of a life that that we have um, grown accustomed to. We need to have somebody to come in who who changes us and points us in the right direction. And, and even as we've come across them to that particular life, it doesn't matter how long or how little we may be in that life. If it's something that's easy for us to follow, without the direction, right, without his direction, we're not going to be right on the right course. So he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. And what he's talking about is those who have followed him. So for us, right, those of us who follow, those of us who have surrendered, right, it has been given, we, we're given, we've been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. 
we have an understanding of going through the scripture. Sometimes we get to heart the particular um, parts of scripture that we may not 100% understand. I, I, I think about um, just this morning as I was listening to um, Chuck Smith talking about um, Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48, right? Um, one of the things that he said is that um, is that he doesn't completely understand those chapters in Ezekiel. And and I was I'm appreciative that he did share that because he's saying that what he's saying is is that I don't know everything, but I'm going to share with you what I do understand, and and and, and he's saying that I hope you that you learn something, and so we have to have to to know that we cannot pretend that we know everything that God is saying through His Word, but we can go through and read His Word and understand and know that it's that He's talking to us. And talking about how Jesus is the one that we need to to follow. When I first read the Word, um, the first time I read the Bible cover to cover, believe it or not, I was not a kid in church. It was one of the times when I had fallen astray, and I was trying to um, trying to reconnect to God on my own accords. And so I thought, well, the best way for me to do that is to sit down and read the Bible. Well, as good as that may have seemed. I didn't understand anything at all, right? I understood a little bit of creation account because because of what I was taught in Sunday school. I understood of Christ dying on the cross for me because of what I learned in Sunday school. But I didn't understand that the whole Bible, all the books in the Bible were written for, for us to learn what it means to have a relationship with God, to have a relationship with Christ, to, to fall into his will and, and to be obedient to his will. But after I rededicated my life, the word opened up. Why? Because the Spirit, when He came into my life, He opened up my He opened up my ears, He opened up my eyes, He opened up my heart, He opened up my mind. He helped me to hear what God was saying. When you go back to Genesis one, for example, where it talks about um, the creation and it says God, we can understand by by even by looking at the word in Hebrew, Elohim is a plural form of God, a plural for, form of a singular verb, meaning that it, it's the idea of, and this is with a, a this is my tongue-in-cheek explanation, guys. So don't take me, um, don't take this as as full gospel, but but it's the idea of this, right? When we work for a company, it's one company that we work for, right? But there are many people in a company, or several people in the company. Well, it's like God. The word God, Elohim, means it's like God is the company, so to speak. And there's several people. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, right? So we can understand that with, with, with when we have the Spirit in our lives, who is who Christ is described as our helper, our counselor, um, the the one who who's going to guide us through, who's going to to help us to change, to to help us to hear what God is saying. When we have the Spirit working in our lives, then 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 we can hear what God's word is saying. We can look at places in scripture and know that when 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 Abram was approached by the angel of the Lord, that it was pre-incarnate Christ. We can understand that it was pre-incarnate Christ coming and talking to him. That when, when Abram, who was later known as Abraham, when he took Isaac up to the mountain to sacrifice, because God told him that, that it was a, a, a foreshadowing of Christ being um, nailed to the cross, right? But... Unless the Spirit is working in our lives and helping us to, to hear what God's Word is saying, we will never understand that. All we all will know is that that how many people have we heard right of the Word of, of the world who don't understand what God is doing about how uh, I, I've I've heard this even just recently right how God of the Old Testament was a vengeful angry God and the God of the New Testament is a loving forgiving God. Believe it or not, God doesn't change. Even the word tells us that God doesn't change, but what we but what we do see is that even as we're going through the Old Testament, right before he he sent Christ to die on the cross, even in the Old Testament, when he brought judgment, he was long suffering, he was patient, he waited a long time and told his people and told the people to repent. They needed to change their ways, right? He gave them forewarning for years. But what did they do? They continued in their own way. Oh, he's not going to deliver judgment. He's just talking out of his hat. 
He's not going to do anything. We're just going to continue on our, on our way. But God was giving them an opportunity to change, right? Just like he does for us. He gives us warning. He gives us an opportunity to change. But when we reject the, the, those warnings, when we reject the, 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 the opportunities, what happens is this, is that we, we will end up um, eventually suffering the consequences, right? But God in the Old Testament was not an angry, vengeful God. He was a loving, patient, right? Just like he is today. Loving, patient, kind, generous, graceful, merciful. And 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 that's what we that's what we learn, right? When we when we have the spirit working in our lives, revealing the word to us. And and so when he was talking about the particular parables, right? This is why he this is what he was talking about with the parables, is like if everybody were to understand what was going on, then people would do things to whatever they could to be forgiven and then continue in their sins. And that's what that's not what God wants. When he when Christ comes into our lives, the expectation is this is that as we say that we have faith in him, that we're going to follow him, that he's going to change us, that the more that we follow him, the more that we walk away from our sin. The more righteous we become, the more holy we become, the more conscientious that we are about that that God loves us and expects us to love others just like we love him, this just like he loves us unconditionally. So with that, guys, this is this is my encouragement for you today, right? Um, we we're, we're living in a time, right? That you know, there is there um, for us in New Mexico, there was um, somebody mentioned something about the the governor had extended our quarantine until May fifteenth. I don't know the 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 validity of that right now. I tried to look it up online. It's still on the on the website. It still says April thirtieth. We're, we're living in a time where, where people are are sick. Um, there, yes, there has been some deaths, um, but we are taking some precautions, right? Um, but the the it, but the more that we listen to what the news is saying, is talking about how many cases, how many people are, are are getting sick, how many deaths, but we're not hearing about how many recoveries, right? We can get so focused on 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 the bad stuff that we forget that God is still working through this, that God is still using this to, 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 for people to recover, right? For people to speak his word, that, that even, even though we are not meeting physically in the uh, face to face, we can still get his word out, right? Um, and that's my encouragement is that whatever you can do, right? Share his love with others, share his word with others. Continue to encourage them. I, I, I get to see more and more people at work, right, that are coming for encouragement that that um, that would not have heard it otherwise. Because a lot of times it takes a crisis for people to hear God, to see his love, to see how he works. Let's continue to walk in faith and, and believe that Christ is working through us. Amen. Father, we, we thank you for, for this time together. Um, again, we pray that this was an encouragement to others and, and that with what we've learned tonight, that it's something that we can use to encourage other people. We pray that more people hear you and, and, and seek to, to be those who uh, of the seeds that was described that fell into good ground, that they, they grow in their faith um, and they share that with other people. And that they don't focus on how many people that they... That, that, that they get to um, see come to, to following you, but they focus on being obedient to, to growing in the relationship with you and sharing that with other people. Because even your word says some of us will be um, sowers, some of us will be um, reapers, some of us will be waterers. And, and, and help us to, to know where we are at and that, that, that we don't focus on um, what others are doing, but, but what you're doing through us and in us. Thank you for, for allowing us or, or loving us the way that you do and allowing us to, to come into your mercy and grace through your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, amen. All right guys, love you guys. Um, don't forget, um, Pastor Ted will be um, sharing on Friday night about 6.30, um, the Recovery and Ministry Study, and, and Sunday morning, Drive-In Church, um, 4817 Central. Um, show up, 
Um, but understand that we're asking people to remain in their cars and, and we're not allowing people into the building, okay? Um, hope to talk to you soon, guys. God bless.